All right, we're going to get right to the point. There's been a lot of cases of coronavirus or COVID-19 since last December, up to over 100,000 cases, us being our users and our programmers. Let's go ahead and start a project where we can start analyzing some of this data. So throughout the next couple tutorials, I'm going to show you how to import the data daily. We're going to modify the code as we go, but each tutorial is meant to be very short, under five or six minutes. And we'll go from um, importing the data to fully on predicting where this possible virus is going to go in the future. So that being said, we have a website here called the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control. Luckily for us, the European CDPC offers this data for free. The United States CDC uh, does not offer this data for free anymore. I believe it's a political thing. Anyways. If you scroll down on this website, which I'll leave for you, um, you'll see a download today's data. If you click on that, it's an Excel file. And this file looks like this. It's got the date reported, the country of exposure, the new confirmed cases, and the new deaths. And then columns E and F, I'm not quite sure what that means. I didn't read the data, data description, which you should do. Uh, we can find that on the website, I'm sure. Okay, notice another thing that there's only two tabs here, and it's a CSV underscore four underscore comms and sheet one, which is the typical Excel file sheet one. All right, so that's not that important yet, but note that if there's multiple tabs, we have to be specific on which tab we want to import. Let's go back to R, and I want to show you a couple things. First, let's go ahead and do a new project, file new project. We will do a new directory, new project. We're going to call this COVID case, whatever you want to name it, I put it on my desktop, create the project. Once that's created, let's go ahead and create a R notebook so we can add some narr narrative to it as we need it. So new file, R notebook. And here we go. We don't need all of this stuff. Delete. We can keep the title uh, and the YAML code up the top. Let's call this COVID cases in R, whatever you want to call it. Okay, now let's go down. So lines one through four, that's just uh, some metadata that's used to create the HTML file that this will produce at the end of the day. All right, so we want to first put a little narrative in there. Let's just do a hashtag, which makes a header. So we're going to say COVID data import. And I'm making this very simple so to keep this tutorial very short. Obviously, you want to add as much information as you'd like. So we can say, this is where we get the data, something like that. Now, for this, I'm going to actually put the main site here, which is right here. Command C. Let's just drop that in. Right now, this is just um, not part of our code, but part of our um, narrative. So how do we insert a R chunk so we can start doing some actual R? Uh, I believe it's Alt Control I. It's been a minute. <laughs> All right, so I insert a chunk here. You can actually type these out. For anybody that's new, these are not the apostrophe. It's not the pinky finger on your keyboard, your QWERTY keyboard. It is actually the uh, key to the left of the number one, so it's called the backtick. That'll confuse you if you didn't know that because they look very similar. All right, so we have the R there. Let's go ahead and install a couple packages that you will definitely need for this. So first, I want you to click on Packages. Go to Install. Let's do HTTTR, and we're going to install that one. Mine's already installed, so I'm not going to install it again. The next package is Read XL, and then you click on Install, same thing. It'll reach out to the CRAN library and install it for you. So once you have those installed, we can use those libraries, so let's go ahead and load them. Make sure you're installed. HTTR and library read XL. I'm going to go ahead and run both these chunks by hitting this little uh, play button here. I got the green light, nothing, no errors, so we're good to go. Totally cool. The HTTR, HTTTR will help us um, navigate some of the URLs that we're going to need, and the read XL will do the reading of the Excel file. Let's start with um, naming that URL that we need. So we'll just call it URL1, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assign it to some sort of string. 
and that string is going to be the actual URL of this Excel file. So I'm going to right click on it, click on copy link address, and we're going to go back over here. I'm going to paste it right in there, command V. And in this tutorial, we're going to leave it as is to keep this short, but notice the date. It's 2020-0308. We know, well, we're going to assume that tomorrow, 3-9, it's going to change to 3-9. So that's something that we have to figure out how to programmatically do in the next tutorial. But for now, let's just use this and get the basics going. So we've got the URL. I'll go ahead and hit Command Enter on this line 14. You'll see it's in my global environment now. Cool. Simple as that. Now what we want to do, we're going to use a get function. The get function is from HTTTR. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, I want URL1 that I just loaded into memory. I'm going to write to the disk. So write underscore disk. Now you don't really have to memorize this. You can just kind of copy it because you don't use it that often. I want to create a temp file and I'm going to call it, well, I'm going to tell it what the extension is going to be, .xls. I know that's to be true. And what's that, what is that going to do? It's going to call this URL right here and it's going to write a temporary file to disk because I don't really want to save this every time. I want to save my R output, but I don't really want to save um, the temporary file. You can save it as an output as well. But um, So let's go ahead and run line 17 to make sure it works. Command enter. And we've got no problems with that. And you'll see TF is up here. We have TF and we have a URL. Now what are we going to do with that? We're going to read that temporary file into memory. So let's go ahead and do um, my data frame. COVID data frame is going to be equal to read underscore Excel and I want TF. Yeah, just like that. That should do the trick. Command enter on that. I want to take a moment to pause because the CDC site sometimes has a .xls file and then other times a .xlsx file. So the case that you have in front of you is fine if it's a .xls. So you'll have to check line 14, the URL 1. If it has the X at the end, we'll make some minor modifications. For example, you'd have the X on the end on line 14, so XLSX will be the extension. Well, on line 17, the get function, on the very right hand side where it shows in quotes .xls, you'll have to make that into a .xlsx. And then finally, on line 19, you would have to, instead of using read underscore Excel, it would be read underscore XLSX. I hope that's not too confusing, but in a later tutorial, I actually show you how to dynamically find out if it's an X or an S at the end of that extension. You'll see DF up here has 45 or 4,528 observations of six variables. If I click on it, you'll see it looks just like my Excel file. So looks like everything is good to go. We've successfully imported this data into R, into memory. Okay, simple as that. Now, once you've done that, now you can start doing the analysis. So that's what I wanted to show you is how to read the data in. Now, tomorrow, this will probably turn into a 0, 9. Let's hope the pattern uh, persists because then we can programmatically do that. Uh, before we get too far, let's just um, keep it as is, clean it up a little bit. Let's jump out of our R chunk and go back to uh, this header, COVID data import. We've done that. Now let's create one called COVID data cleanup. We'll call it that. I have no idea what we're really going to do because this is for next time. And we're just going to say this is uh, cleaning up of the data. Let's save this. Command S or file save. Let's Save it as uh, script one, and it's in the directory where we created the project. Hit save. Now what we can do, we're not really doing much here. Let's just go ahead and, for fun, create another R chunk, alt control I. So alt control insert, think about it that way. And let's just do something simple as, as the, we want the sum. So we want the sum of the data frame that we just created of all the new deaths total, right? I'm gonna hit play on that. We should get a number, 3584. So 3584 deaths total. Now, 
We're not gonna get into the analysis in this one, but what I wanna do is Control S again, save it. Let's go ahead and render this and I'll show you what the output is. So I go down here to my console and I can do R markdown, colon, colon, render. And then let's type in the exact thing here. It's called, uh, and I'll put it in quotes too, script one.rmd. And I think I could do, yeah, let's just leave it like that. Command, or just enter because we're in the console. Hit enter, it's going to actually create a, a notebook HTML file, which is basically an HTML file. If you go to your files here, and we go to script one.rmd, that's that. But then below that, we have script.nb.html. If you click on that, you can open an editor or view in browser. I like to view it in browser because sometimes the editor, you do have to rely on our studio to be up to date with the editor. With the browser, it truly is what your browser would show if you gave this file to somebody or uploaded it. So here it is. We have all of our stuff here. And as you can see at the bottom, it's 3584. We can hide the code. We can hide all the code, but we have our headers. We can globally hide or show all code. We can download this RMD file. So you've successfully created this. Now there's not much here, but I wanted to keep this short. Tomorrow, let's do a little bit more. So every day, slightly more. I advise you to play around with it and try this out again. Again, if you find these useful, share it with your friends, help me out. I'm trying to get to a monetization status, which means I have to have a thousand subscribers and about 2000 hours of watch time to be monetized. And I'm not even close, but as long as you guys are continuously watching these videos, you're helping me out and I appreciate that.